In today's notes, we're going to take a look at the graphs of an exponential equation and also the transformations. Reading at the top of the page, it says an exponential function is a function in which the independent variable appears in the exponent. So the equation looks like this. Y, let's make the marker smaller, y equals a times b to the x, where a is not equal to zero, or else when you multiply b to the x times zero, that'd be zero, and you get rid of that exponential function. Your b value is greater than zero, and it doesn't equal one, because if it did, one to anything is one, and then one times your a value would just be y equals a, which is a linear function. The next bullet, an asymptote, A-S-Y-M-P-T-O-T-E. An asymptote is a line that a graph approaches but does not touch. So since it's a line, we're going to be looking to write the equation of a line. And typically, it's a horizontal line which is y equals something. So for the transformations, I have an example to the right as well for y equals 3 to the x. And then you can see here is y to 3x plus 5 versus y to uh, equals 3 to the x minus 5. So you can see that this is a shift from here up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units. And then here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 units down. So in the first row of the table, this value here is a shift up and down. And if you have a positive, it's going to go up. A negative, it's going to go down. So the transformation is a shift up five units. And this is a shift down five. Within the function notation, just like within the obviously very symbols within the parentheses for the quadratic, when we have the plus 2 and, in this case, the second one, minus 1, but when you add or subtract within the exponent, as the, it's an exponential function, that's a shift left and right. So when it's plus 2, we think we're going to move right 2, but it's actually a shift left 2, and then this is a shift right one. Down below, um, we have y equals a times b to the x. So the coefficient out front, as it does for others, that's going to make it right side up or upside down. So in this first uh, equation of this row, y equals negative 3 to the x. This is going to be upside down or reflection across the x-axis. The next one, y equals 6 times 3 to the x, or 1 half. So the 6, just like with the, the v in the problem, makes it more narrow. Because the exponential curve is like this, a vertical stretch versus a horizontal stretch is the way we describe instead of more narrow or more wide. So think of narrow pulling it up. That's a vertical stretch as verticals up and down. Think of the one halving and making the parabola of the V really wide. So this would be a horizontal stretch. And then next, when we actually change not the um, A value up front, but change the exponent from a negative to a positive, that's going to reflect it over the Y axis. So we're actually going to see some of these transformations below in example number one for y equals 2 to the x. So instead of a base 3, we're going to look at a base 2. And then y equals 2 to the negative x, or y equals 1 half x. Now these two equations are the same because if you remember the negative exponent rule, 2 to the negative x is equal to 1 over 2 to the x, which is the same as saying one half to the x power because one to the any our exponent or power is one and then that would be two to that exponent so on the left let's do y equals two to the x 
So if we type this into our calculator, I'll give you a moment. We'll take a look at the table of values. I'm going to use for the x, negative 3 to a positive 3. So the y values would be 0 0.125, 0 0.25, 0 0.51, 4, 8. So I'm going to start at 0, 1 here. 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 4, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now 1.5, and then negative 3, and then 2. So I'm going to start my curve here. And I do want to put the arrows at the end, because it didn't tell me a specific x values to use. And then on your calculator, y equals 2 to the negative x, I'm still going to use negative 3 to 3. And then we'll compare these graphs below. And you'll see you have 8, 4, 2, 1. It's just the opposite. This is a demonstration of your reflection. So 0, 1 again. And then this time, negative 1, 2. And it's a reflection over the y-axis. Negative 2, 3, 4. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 0.5. And then... So here's y equals 2 to the negative x, y equals 2 to the x. And you can actually see that reflection. We're going to fill in these blanks below, and then I'm actually going to open up the graphing calculator software and talk about a few more um, relationships and uh, aspects of these two exponential curves. Now both points, or both graphs rather, include the point 0, negative 1 right here. So without shifting it left, right, up, or down, they're both going to include 0, negative 1 because, again, this is your y value, this is your x. If you plug it into the equation, 1 equals 2 to the 0 power, and that's true. And then, um, whoops, this is supposed to be include the point 0, 1. Here's your x, your y. Because 1 is equal 2 to the 0, and 1 is equal to 2 to the negative 0. Well, we don't write the negative, so it's just 1 equals 2 to the 0. If we look at y equals 2 to the x, now on the left side, each of these numbers from 1 to the next is increasing by 1. On the right side, what's going on with these numbers? It may be easier to see down here, for instance, 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8. So for y equals 2 to the x, okay, each value is being doubled because it's a base of 2. Over on the right side, for y equals 2 to the negative x, your x values are still increasing by 1, but on the y values, they're now being multiplied by 1 half, or the values are halved. Okay, the bullet above that I skipped, it says as the x values decrease by a constant amount, the y values are multiplied by a constant amount. This amount is your b value again, a b value of 2 and a b value of 1 half. So let's go to the graphing calculator, and I want to talk about the asymptotes. Now, the asymptote, again, is a line that the curve approaches but it never reaches. So in this case for both, since we didn't move the curve up or down, if we did that, then that line would change, or the asymptote would change. So here, our asymptote is, again, a horizontal line, y equals 0. And it's also y equals 0 here, because we didn't move the graph up or down. There's no plus or minus. When you go to the graphing calculator, and let's type in y equals 2 to the x, not 5, 2 raised, use the caret, to the x power, 
and we go to the table, you can actually see that the y values approach zero. So second table, and then we go up. Look at your y values, 0 0.5, 0 0.25, 0 0.125, 0 0.0. They keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And eventually, the calculator, again, smaller, smaller, smaller. Scientific notation, very, very small numbers. So it keeps approaching, but never touches zero. For some values, uh, or for some, and you can keep holding the arrow button, you can see it never becomes negative. It just keeps getting smaller. That negative uh, number there at the end, e to the negative number, that's your exponent in scientific notation. So let's do y equals 2 raised to the negative x. Graph. Something's going on here. 2 caret negative x. And you can see there's the reflection, second table. And again, I'm still done at x equals negative 62, and it's a very small number. If I want to set my table back to start at 0, just go second table, step, uh, table set. I'm going to choose to have it start at 0. So now when I go to my table, it starts, or should start, at 0. Oh, I had to change by 0. Start at 0 is the first one. And then the next one is what you want it to increase by, and I do want it to increase by 1. So now take a uh, second table, it starts at zero. So we'll see if we can um, see where it does start to repeat maybe in another question. And that might be for one of those equations where we have the plus or minus, but we'll see. On the back side, our first example, it says, what is the equation of the graph to the right? So that graph, if you take a look, um, they all say y equals 2 to the x except for number 1. And number 1 can actually be thrown out because this is not an exponential function. You need that exponent of x. So we're down to these two. Now 2 to the x, remember, is going to cross at 0, 1. And it, actually this graph is moved down. So none of them say plus, which is fine. We can also get rid of this one because this one should be going this way, a reflection over the y-axis. So we're down to these two. From 0, 1 because this is where 2 to the x is. Did we go down 3 or 4? So 1, 2, 3 would be choice 2. Number 3, the graph of the equation uh, y equals 4 to the x. So if we give a sketch, and we're not going to go to our calculator, we know that it's going to go through the point 0, 1, because 1 is equal to 4 to the 0 power. And it's a reflection of the y-axis. So here's y-x. There's no movement up or down, so it's not going to be below the x-axis. And our quadrants are 1, 2, 3, 4. So this graph is in quadrants 1 and 2. Describing the movement, the shifts, the transformations up, down, left, right, from y equals 3 to the x and 3 to the x minus 5. So the only difference is this minus 5. So this is a shift down five units. The only difference in the next one, they both are one half is their base. It goes from x to x plus seven. So that's a shift. Remember plus, it's going to be the opposite we think right, but it's going left seven units. And the last one, we go from a positive out front to a negative, so that's going to uh, bring it upside down. So this is reflected over the x-axis. What is the equation of the asymptote? So let's actually go to the graphing calculator for this one. And let's type it in. So y equals 7 caret, and you want to use parentheses, x plus 2 graph that's not going through the 0, 1 because it's being shifted left 2. So the asymptote, since it, again, we didn't move it up or down, is right here along the x-axis. 
which is y equals 0. Go to your table, and you can go up. You can see the numbers get smaller, and you can keep holding it down, but it's never going to become negative, so that, does, that means the y value never goes below the x-axis. I'm going to change my table again to start at 0. So again, y equals 0 is the asymptote. Choice 1. Last one, example number 6. We're going to make a table and graph y equals 2 to the x plus 4. I'm going to use negative 3 to 3 for my values. And our y values are 4.125, 4.25, 4.25, 4.25. Which makes sense because it's going up four units from zero one. And one plus four is five. What do we have up? One, six, two, eight, and three, twelve. So if I graph that at zero, one, two, three, four, five. Again, the difference over here to here is four units. That's why it went up. One, six, two, seven, eight, and then negative one, four and a half. And it just is going to approach but never go past our asymptote right here of y equals 4. I'm going to show you how you can see that on the table. You can see here that it's approaching 4. So the shift, how is it transformed? The graph was shifted. You can see it from the equation or from the picture itself. It went up. Four units. Our y-intercept, looking at the tables right here, so 0, 5. Make sure you include parentheses, and the asymptote is y equals 4. So let's, as I mentioned, take a look at this on the graphing calculator. Uh, y equals 2 to the x plus 4. 2 caret x, move down from the caret, plus 4 graph. You can actually see it start to lay flat. So if I go to the table, and I'm going to click up, you can see it starts approaching. Keep holding it. It gets smaller. Oh, there we go. See how it starts to repeat? That's your asymptote. Okay? And it looks like it only do that if you're shifting up or down. Otherwise, it's right at zero. And that's our lesson for today.